hint of things to come, I'm going to open this door. Hi, I'm George the Antique Nomad. Come with me as I wander the country in search of valuable vintage, amazing antiques, and cool collectibles. We'll buy, sell, and trade at antique malls, shops, and shows, estate sales, flea markets, thrift stores, anywhere people go to find really interesting things that just aren't made anymore. So come on, let's go! Hey everybody, it's George, and I've got a surprise for you. A bunch of you have asked me to show what it was like to set up an estate sale. And so I had one in Florida last weekend, and I shot a series of Periscope, and they were live feeds that showed the various steps of going through this huge hoarded waterfront house. And I'm so excited because I get to put it together and bring it to you in video form now. So here is the first part. This shows when we've just gotten into the house and the things that we find and we'll work on from there. So have fun. We will have a good time showing you all this cool stuff and how we found it and what we did with it. Hey everybody, it's George the Antique Nomad and I am glad to be with you. This will be something different. I'm in an undisclosed location near St. Petersburg and I am involved with preparing an estate sale. So I thought I'd spend 10 or 15 minutes today. If this all works, then I'm gonna to try to come back every day as we prepare this sale. We've got a lot of work to do, but let's take a look around. We will show you some of what's in this house that we found so far and what we have left to discover. Well, we'll discover day by day. So this house was built in the 1950s and then seriously redone in the 1980s. So there's an 80s Florida vibe here for sure, which you can see by this front entry table, which I think is a lot of fun with the big palmate base there. Uh, there are some vintage and collectible items here, but this is a real estate sale. It's everything in the house. And boy, does this house have a lot, as you're about to see. This is on the lead into the house. We've been trying to straighten things up, organize things, put boxed things where they're kind of out of the way. But there is a lot of stuff in this house. A lot of stuff. We've got a closet full of men's clothes over there. I'm going to turn and show you the living room. It's a little dark today. Unfortunately, we're just clouding over right when I went to start this, but I can show you this showcase. And look at this deco style with the mirrors. This is a deco revival. They were very popular in the 1980s and early 90s. And these folks had some really wonderful crystal. They like Swarovski and they went to Murano. You see the two figures on the left. Those are actually pretty desirable. And the case is 80s, and I think the case is nice too. I always liked these back in the day. The glass piece behind is also Murano. The smoke glass there, it looks like a Submerso. And the piece in the middle, the blue and green. So there is some pretty glass in here. We haven't gotten to look at all of the crystal yet to see who the makers were. I've seen Shannon. There is some Swarovski here. So the early stages of preparing for an estate sale are exactly that, the early stages. It has to do with going through the house, figuring out the layout and where things are going to go, grouping like items, and trying to ferret out the more valuable and interesting items so that you can feature them not only in the advertising but in the right part of the house. We like to try to make the front room of the house be the room where the fanciest and most valuable items are partly because it makes a good impression on everybody coming in the door and makes the rest of the house seem more interesting, but also because it's good for security. We want those things up where we can keep an eye on them and make sure that they go home paid for and that people get a chance to see them in their best light. The gal who you'll probably see who's helping me today, Rhonda, she's really great. She's an antique dealer as well and she knows vintage and she does the shows in Mount Dora where I just did, so she's helping with the setup. This set here is Russian and it's a very pretty set. Nice tea set that I have not encountered before. So there's a showcase full of stuff. There's some original art and this one is a bit dark, but the um, beeping in the background that you hear is actually the smoke detector, which I have not been able to disable. It seems to be hardwired. Uh, this house was not occupied for a while, and you're gonna see the evidence of that as we go around. 
This table here is a seal with a ball on his nose. Hopefully you can see that, even though it's a little dark in here. The furniture is leather, it's nice. The pelican should do well because this is, after all, the part of the country where pelicans are a thing. P. Salas is the artist on that. So the pelican painting went with the viewer and I was really excited. I had several people who were viewers come and visit me at the estate sale. It's really neat. I've done estate sales in several different states and I like the idea that I've gotten to meet some different people in each one and get to see what they like. In this case, the Pelican painting I knew would be a hit locally and we do price things that we think should stay in the local market accordingly because it doesn't make sense for that to end up being shipped off to some other region when the people who really enjoy that motif are right here. I'm going to try to go very slowly so you don't have too many spins as I go through. The lamp is very 70s. The base lights up as well. I might be able to show you that. Let me get close to it and see if there is a bulb in the bottom. We've only been here since yesterday. Yep, there it is. There's the full effect. And this fan here is kind of nice with the... I don't even have to flip the camera because it's an 80s house, so there's mirrors everywhere. People like to look at themselves a lot in the 80s. And this is a hand-painted... Chinese fan made of peacock feathers. So that's something different. There are some figurines as well. Some cute little stuff that the ones on the piano look similar to Joseph figurines, but I don't think they are. Uh, but the lady on the right here, she is a Royal Dalton. And then as we pan down, you're going to see we found one piece of cranberry glass. We also found a factice. This one's for men, the boss elements in the back, but we have a whole little tray of perfume and cologne, and we find that perfume and cologne do really well at state sales that we do. These are Vohan of California out of the late 70s, and there are collectors for these. So there is some collectible stuff. We found some costume jewelry. The lady of the house, the, the, the folks who lived here have moved. A downsize this was just too big to manage. Let me show you what a fact he says. This would have been in a department store. It was never filled with eau de toilette because this would be like a thousand dollars worth. It was just a bottle to look cool in the display that showed what the bottle that you were going to get was. That's why they call it a fact -tease. It's basically a facsimile. And then there's a, another bunch of stuff here, figures and such that we haven't gone through. This painting they acquired in Paris. It's rather nice, original oil. And they did like chandeliers. The chandeliers are going to be for sale. Most of the things in this house are for sale, and there are a lot of things in this house. So let's go to another room here just to show you some other things. We have only been working here for two days, so you'll see the parts that we've organized. They had a home office, and because of that, there's a lot of office equipment, and it runs the gamut. It goes all the way back to, well, probably when they moved in here in the late 80s, as you can see by the computer terminal on the left, but there's some more modern things, too. With an estate sale, again, we're not just looking at antiques. We're looking at everything in the house because people will come to buy all sorts of practical things, things they can use today. This is definitely a 1980s mixed media piece. And yeah, there are some cool things here. I think this will be a fun sale. This mixed media is huge. It's very 80s with the skyline, skyscrapers, that sort of thing. A lot of skylines really took off in the 80s and got large across the country. So skyline motif became popular then. Another thing you're going to see is a lot of stereo equipment. In this box, we have to sort through it, but we did find a stamp collection. And then just some little oddball bits. I found a few house art trays. This one is one I've never seen before, but the gentleman is a, uh, was a physician in his career. And this one says, get well soon. Your doctor just got drafted, which means it's from the 1960s when a lot of those were made. They have another one here from Minnesota, a large one. And then this really neat pipe. I believe that uh, this couple originally were from Eastern Europe. 
And so you'll see a few things that are folk tradition from there. There's a bunch of clothing. It's very dark looking in here. There's not a lot of overhead light. That's a little bit of a disadvantage, but there are some vintage pieces. So we're gonna to need to go through those and check those out. We always like to put out the unused cosmetics and personal care stuff, because again, people coming to an estate sale will buy for many different reasons. So then we're gonna see why we aren't gonna have the sale this weekend. This is one of the two garages. You can see it's pretty full. We have a lot of going through to go through. And we're not sure what's in a lot of these boxes. It's very dark in here, so I won't spend a lot of time here. Uh, there are some children's toys. There's a little bit of Christmas, including a nice small size ceramic tree. I expect that will be the first thing that sells because we are, well, right before Christmas. And ceramic trees are definitely the most popular thing going right now. And that's a vintage one from the 70s. Okay, I'll try not to give you guys head spins as we go through the rest of the house, but I'm in a cul-de-sac, so we're gonna move on towards the next room. This room back here is going to be the music room. Again, it's kind of dark. Hopefully we'll get better light in here. That's one of our tasks as we prepare an estate sale. And you'll see a whole big unsorted mess. We have a few of these. There's an attic full that looks like this. There's another garage full that looks like this. And there's some other bits as well. It really is a lot of work. It took over 300 labor hours to put on this sale between the prep and having the sale itself. The fellow was a musician. I believe he still is. I understand he's fun to watch, so I might have to check him out. But uh, he's got the... PV amp here, and a closet full of clothes, and then we're going to turn around, and since he is, after all, rock star, we're going to see some really big PV amps. I expect that we're going to probably get 350 for those, because they're pretty much for professional, for doing live concerts in small venues. There's a nice keyboard here. There's even an old sound mixing board and the Technics, even the cassette decks sell with the old Technics with the stainless steel fronts. There are some people and a few kinds of music that you can only get on cassette. There are some things that are hard to sell well in an estate sale and it really sometimes depends on the owner and their perspective. In this case, the owner, because they were involved with music, they understood that these items had value to professional musicians and they remembered what they paid for them. Unfortunately, when we have three days in an estate sale situation, we're competing against pawn shop prices, not retail music store prices. And unfortunately, they set a lot of their reserves high. I don't usually let people set reserves, but in this case with the musical equipment, he had very strong feelings about it and, well, we had to give it a try. So. We will look into that a little bit. And this giant Casio keyboard in the box. There's a lot of items in the box in this place, which is nice because, you know, Christmas is coming and somebody can buy. It might not be a brand new gift, but it's in the box. So that makes it a gift, right? We've got a retro, although desperately needing cleaning, but we did some magic sponge on one of the chairs today and it started to clean up, but we have these nice bucket seats. Our VCR selling, there are a couple of models of VCRs that still sell. I have an 88 year old mother, she insists on using the VCR for her old movies. And so we buy her one every time the old one goes out. There is definitely some vintage stuff here for sure. This lamp here on the right is 80s era vintage. And then we've got a lot of glassware in here. Up on the left here, it's been through the dishwasher, so we'll see if it can be restored, but that is Treasure Craft. That's the company I wrote the book on, and that is the fish chip and dip set, and more fish stuff. And the reason for lots of fish stuff, and you'll see we're on a canal here, so this is waterfront, kind of on a cul-de-sac of a canal. 
This is a pretty Noritake set from the 1950s. Now, Noritake isn't the easiest to sell these days because not as many people are decorating and entertaining like this, but those are pretty. Let's take a look at the mark on the back so you can see. Yeah, this is the Noritake M hand-painted mark. So this is from shortly after World War II because it just says Japan rather than made in Japan. But this pattern originally was from the 1930s kind of their version competing with Limoges. These are the original brochures that came with, and Alvar Aalto designed this originally in 1936, and it became very popular to collect his stuff again in the 80s and 90s, and Itala, Finland, is the name of the company. So we figured anywhere there was paperwork, I like to leave it with because people like to have the paperwork. One of the things I think is really great about conducting estate sales is it stretches your knowledge. As a reseller, I have to learn about anything I encounter in a house. And that might be something that I never would have thought to buy on my own. And it might be something new or recent vintage. And while as a dealer, I'm primarily interested in vintage and antique items, and an estate sale house, you need to be able to figure out everything, and that's my job. These etched stems are nice, and then this little set here is also from, and you'll see it says CCCP, so it's actually from the Soviet Union. So this is before the fall of the Berlin Wall. So these are going to be probably 1970s. It's also a lot of fun because you get to involve yourself with people and cultures that are not just your own. And so you really get to see slices of different kinds of lives. It's really fascinating. I love it. Again, a whole lot more box stuff. We've just been assembling it with Christmas coming. We figure people will like things in boxes. I'm going to give you a little hint at what is to come because this is where my dear friend Rhonda is working right now. We have an entire upstairs on top of it. So while I'm thinking of it, please comment in the space below here and also hit the thumbs up button to like this video. If you haven't subscribed, click the subscribe button below. Also hit the bell below to be notified of new videos coming every Monday and Wednesday at 8 p.m. Eastern. And thank you so much for following along. Let's go back to this video. Now, when I see a really packed house like this, I'm thinking, do I see enough things of value to meet the payroll? Because I knew going into this that I would have to do at least 10,000 in sales. These stools here have never been out of the wrap. They are brand new, and I'm sure we'll take them out of the wrap for the sale, but I figured, well, we're moving all this stuff around. We better leave them for the time being. I believe these might be the Los Angeles Pottery Company. In fact, I'm almost sure they are, even though they're not marked, because they've got the little spider marks on them. We took down all the big teapot collections. Some of them look like they're just cute, and some of them seem like they might be valuable. This kitchen was more or less empty, and everything was in boxes. These folks moved out moved in again, then moved somewhere else, had rental property. Stuff has come here from all over. So it is just kind of crazy how much stuff there is. You see these late 70s, early 80s Pyrex. This pattern with the shallots and marjolaine are starting to really sell. And the French white is always popular too. And then I'm going to give you one more hint of things to come. I'm going to open this door. I'm going to turn on the light, if I can find it. There we go. And you're going to see a very dark garage that is very full. But one of the things we have for sale is a 1989 Lincoln Town Car hiding under all of this stuff. It hasn't moved in years. It's got a couple of flat tires, but apparently it has very, very low miles. Something like 20 or 30,000. And I think that our reserve on it is only 4,500, and for such low miles, once it's cleaned up and got tires and a battery in it again, which I hope to get done this weekend, well, we'll have a very schmaltzy fancy car. And I don't know how much you're going to be able to see of this as I turn, but there is stuff all the way hanging in the rafters in this garage. This garage is extremely full, and there's also some lights. And the good thing is, with the lights, we'll be able to bring it in and 
that will allow us to light things a little better so that the next time I show you our progress, I will be able to actually show you our progress. I should be here preparing every day and until the sale starts. So I will show you more of the house tomorrow. There's an entire upstairs you haven't seen yet. And there's stuff outside too. Hello everybody, it's George. I'm back for another quick little tour of things that we have found as we're preparing for the estate sale. We're actually going to take a trip outside today because it's very gray and overcast and like our usual Floridian weather. Uh, but I want to show you the first thing that we found. Well, we knew it was here, but ta-da! We got it out of the garage today. I've got the back two hubcaps, the most valuable thing, single item in the estate. It's this 1989 Lincoln Town Car. And this one is really, it's kind of dirty because it's been stored for 25 years in this garage. It did not move out of here until today. So we'll have some work to do to wash the outside. I've got to put the hubcaps back on. We had to have air put in the tires. But it is a beauty. It's definitely a land yacht and a half. And it has all leather, all power, everything, as Lincoln's always did. I don't know if the door's open. Oh, yeah, it is. So you can see the interior here. But it's very clean. It is definitely the big old, big old everything. And it has 32,000 miles on it, which is a pretty amazing low amount of mileage for a car that is from 1989. So I think for somebody who likes classic vehicles, this Lincoln Town Car is old enough to be a classic. It's a little bit of a dirty classic today. But boy, it is a big, comfortable boat. And yes, they just left it in the garage. This house hasn't been occupied for a while. And I believe this actually belonged to the grandfather. And when he passed on, the family kept it, didn't know what to do with it, and it's been here ever since. Once I saw that the car was going to be in good enough shape to sell, I became a lot more relaxed about all the work that went into the rest of the sale because selling a single item of high value really does make a, the rest of the sale a lot easier. And now we're walking to the back. I'm doing mainly outside stuff. We found a few things today and this is the next part I've been working on. Uh, we're also doing a lot of overflow here. Yes, the realistic sound effects of scraping through the fronds, so you're getting the full detail as if you were here with me. There's not a ton of vintage outside here, but there are a few things that we found that I'm going to show you today because we've also been digging out of an attic upstairs. So the concrete benches are definitely something that people look for here. They're very substantial. They are from the original house. This house was originally a 1960s house. So those date back about 50 years, as do, I believe, these two little metal tables, which do need glass. But these should sell because people like concrete, and we're in Florida, and it's wintertime, and you can't tell today, but we are on the water, and it really is a very lovely place, and on a nice sunny day, well, you'd want to sit out on a bench like that. Also, these chairs over here, not the three with the webbed backing, but they did have the seats all done the same. But the two on the end with the metal that bends, I think those are kind of neat looking too. And those are vintage. So I expect that we'll have a buyer for those. The cushions are really clean because they were kept inside every year, which is great. You've seen a couple of these cafe tables with some sort of marble tops. One is pretty worn. The other one looks like it's in good shape. You can hear the neighbor's dog is very excited to see us out here. We came across this birdcage from the 1970s today, and the colors match that thermos on the left there pretty well. It's funny, thermoses that are vintage like this, this is early 70s with the green and orange, very Brady Bunch colors, they're selling these days, and I would think 8 or $10 might be an estate sale price. And then we have a one-eyed alligator head and a turtle shell. The bowling pin Bowling stuff has a way of doing well. Old head from a Singer sewing machine. So we are finding some older stuff as we go through this house. A bunch of license plates. The 
one that I'll show you that actually has collector value is the one on the left because it shows the Challenger and of course the Challenger and its crew unfortunately are no longer with us. So that one is collectible in and of its own right. This Structo truck is one of the older things that we found today up in the attic. It has a lot of surface rust, but so do a lot of cars in Florida that are that old. And then there's a little pile here I wanted to show you. I was very happy to see Twister because, well, Twister ties you up in knots and it's got the mat and everything in it that looks like it's original from the 60s. This little box here had some goodies. I was, these folks were very good about putting everything in plastic wrap. This box here is very nice. It is bronze. It's got a nice deeply encrusted scene on it. The lid is loose. But here's something to be aware of when you're looking at estate sales. Other people's attributions you should not trust. You should definitely do your own research. Because this tag says French 16th century box and that it's very valuable, worth a thousand dollars plus. Well, it's a nice old box. If it was from the 16th century, it would be quite valuable. The pattern is similar to 16th century, but look at the repeating design there. In the 16th century, they could not have created those exact uniform designs. That was done by a machine, and since it was done by a machine, well, you can't expect it to be from the 16th century. So it has the look, but it's not worth a thousand dollars, I'm afraid. I wish it was, because we're certainly looking for things to help make this a good sale. This, on the other hand, is marked 830 at the bottom. This is Russian, and 830 is, means it's 83% fine, so it's a form of coin silver, and that one is going to be worth probably 25 to 30 dollars. Finding silver in a house or gold in a house is something that happens to me a lot and it's very helpful because it's something with intrinsic value that you know is going to be easy to sell one way or another. Now if you're lucky you get really beautiful silver vetru and things that are ornate and fancy and have a value beyond the metal value, but believe me, even if it's a piece of scrap metal, it is always a welcome find in a big house with a dig like this. We did not find a lot of precious metals at all in this house. The people who were involved were pretty savvy about that and kept those things, and I wouldn't blame them for doing that. But we certainly like it when we're preparing an estate sale if we're able to sell those sorts of things for family because it does pump up the totals quite a lot. This piece looks like it's the bottom pull for a tapestry that would have been of a religious nature. This is older because it says made in USA and it's got about a 1970s patent date on it. This is when people first started to collect pocket watches and this is made to hold a pocket watch or another object in the round. And then because we're on the waterfront, well, we have Jonah and the whale. There's the whale and there is Jonah in there somewhere. Let's turn so we can see Jonah. There's a little better light. Jonah doesn't look disappointed because he knows he's getting out of there. Let's see, there's an atlas jar here. One other thing I wanted to show, I wanted to open this because it says it is a walnut wood cross from the Presbyterian Church of St. Petersburg, Florida from 1920. And that should be a nice old piece. There's a lot of old churches in this area that have gone by the by. I had a really great window out of one once that sold for several hundred dollars. So let's see if I can do this with one hand. It's a little hard to hold the phone and do this simultaneously, but I'll bet they'll manage. Now, for a moment, I'll tell you what. I'll show you guys this American Bowling Congress patch from the 1950s. That was in a box. And while I show you that, I'll try to get this cross out. I love that shape. Of course, bowling was such a big thing in the 50s and 60s back when everybody's dad was in a league. Um, it's more of a kid's thing now. So for those of you who suffered through all of that, this beautiful wood cross was made from walnut wood, which was part of the original sanctuary of the Pasadena Presbyterian Church of St. Petersburg, Florida. So it's just very plain, but it's nice that they preserved a little bit of the church. And then I'm going to take you inside and we're going to go upstairs real quickly here. We're still working on this room. It's less of a pile than it was. But this is how the house in general looked when we 
came in here. So there's still going to be things to find. We've pretty much filled this with objects that we found around the house. And then I'm going to head upstairs here. The lovely Katie, who's trying to get... Uh, there we go. Yay. Thank you for waving. So many times I say, oh, I've got this really great person here helping me, and they run away because they don't want to be on camera. This is the upstairs, and she is doing an amazing job with all these clothes. There are a lot of clothes, and yes, this is a lot of work. Putting together an estate sale like this really is a lot of work. The chandelier here is Swarovski crystal and 24 karat gold, and these were very expensive new. 30 years ago, this cost something like $3,500. We're hoping that it might go for as much as $1,500 at the sale now. I'll take you out the uh, door here so that you can see the view again. A little better view. It's nice being on the canals here. And you can see most of the houses sit lower than this one. This one had a lot of additions and it's going to need some work so you can see some paint and things along the way. But I wanted to show you one more thing. The curved glass cabinet is cool. This is a very 1980s look with the glossy walnut burl. The house, boy, what is the house worth? That's a good question. Florida is still less expensive than some places but it has been catching up. And then here's something that I wanted to show just to finish off for today upstairs. Absolutely 1980s Neo Deco. And these are starting to come back into style. A lot of these were made in Italy in the late 70s and early 80s. They were made using lacquer. This set is in really nice condition. And you've got the 80s lamps there. And one of those lapis globes over on the stand there. And Katie's been looking around. There are some 80s era and 70s era clothes. So we think there may be some vintage here. And yes, these lamps are really neat. These are based on 1930s designs, but they were done in the 1980s. You don't really see them as tall as this in the 1930s. So that's a way to tell the difference. And then just to tantalize you, because I like to leave you with something that we're going to look at later. Tomorrow, we're going to venture into this attic door here because there's a whole bunch of boxes of stuff, and I'm hopeful that maybe we'll find some more interesting bits and have more to show you. So I'm going to turn around here. You can see we've got piles of clothes and purses and me. <laughs> this is what we found today. So we will keep showing you a little bit uh, every day or two from the sale as we find new things, as it progresses so you can see how we set things up. I think this house being so full is likely to bring out a crowd, definitely. So, uh, and I haven't even shown you the two garages yet. So we have a lot of work to do, but it is great to have you with us. Thanks for joining me again, and we'll come back in a day or two and show you some more. This is George the Antique Nomad signing off for now. So that's it for the first part of the sale, which is the initial walkthrough and getting the layout and starting the setup and the dig. Now we've got two big days of digging and you're going to see us in some pretty unlikely places trying to ferret out stuff for you to see. So join us in our next video because there is more to show of the estate sale prep and the result. We'll look forward to seeing you for more then. Thanks for joining me again in the fun and fascinating antique community here where online meets the real world. Please click the subscribe button below. Click the bell to be notified when new videos upload. Leave a comment below and hit thumbs up to like this video. Links to our online social media daily posts and our items for sale are in the description. This is George at The Antique Nomad. Bye for now!